I was married for nine years, school teacher for 10 years, and I had two of the most beautiful little girls anyone has ever seen. I was in the corporate world, going along with business and uh, having any, all the dreams that everybody has. We're married 16 years this year, and we basically met in high school and fell in love and got married and started traveling. When I turned about 38 years old, I had a baby, four years old now. At that point, we were married eight years. Mm -hmm. We had our first daughter, Alessia, who was two and a half. Um, pregnant. We, pregnant. <laughs> um, we had, we're pregnant with my second child. We had our own, you know, own business, doing very well. I've had three children. Twins that at the time were five years old, boy girl twins, and I had a three year old daughter as well. Um, married nine years, um, just having a fantastic life. Busy, busy, busy working mother. I have two children. I have three wonderful boys 15, 10, and 5. I stay at home, run around with them, do everything that is required as a mom. I went alone. I didn't bring my husband. I just wasn't really thinking at that point that it was possibly a cancer diagnosis. I just figured it was the lump or a cyst and I could handle it. And as soon as I got in the office, I started to cry. It was an enormous shock. I couldn't believe I was hearing those words that I had breast cancer. I was stunned, um, I, numb, just, I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. I found this lump and that was in uh, mid-May, early May, mid-May, early May, and of course, you know, thinking I have no time at this very moment to address this. One morning, I woke up and I felt this ever so small lump and I thought, you know, uh, it's so small, you know, it can't be breast cancer. Uh, while there is breast cancer in my family, uh, I did not think I can be victimized at such a young age. So I thought, oh, it's probably nothing, it'll go away. Taking a shower and um, there was something there that wasn't there before. It was a lump, obviously, but right away, you know, I knew. And I went back and I had a sonomamo and the results went back to my gynecologist and um, she said, oh no, we don't really see anything that we should be concerned with and we're just going to watch you. And I rejected that answer because I had lost my mother um, over 30 years ago to breast cancer. I never felt the lump and I did do my regular exams and I never felt the lump. Um, you know, then afterwards, it was biopsy time, but I think from the memo, the surgeon I had seen initially had said, I can almost tell you this 99%, you know, without even having to do the biopsy that you have breast cancer. It's a surprise. Your world turns upside down in three hours worth of notice from a routine test to rushing to go see specialists about cancer and you don't think those type of things are supposed to happen to a pregnant girl. I never thought in a million years anything as devastating as cancer would happen to me. What am I gonna do with my kids? Who's gonna take care of my kids? <laughs> I was at school when I received the news and of course I immediately fell apart and immediately left school and my husband was home waiting for me and my parents and it was, um, it was just devastating. One of the mammograms showed that there was something suspicious and a lumpectomy was done and uh, he just whispered. He always whispers. It's like he just hates to say that word to anybody. You have cancer. I was uh, 34 years old at the time of diagnosis. I was young, 
and um, he also found that microscopic cells were found in my lymph node. So it was suggested that a mastectomy um, be the course of treatment followed by chemotherapy. I consulted my sister, my oldest sister is a physician, she's an infectious disease specialist and she said, you know Carla, a mastectomy is the way to go. And then I just looked at Cindy and I said, you know what, I think bilateral is the way to go. I, I, I can't go through this more than once. It needs to be, it needs to be finished. I need to address it, I need to address it aggressively and I need to move on and I need to not have to think back and say, should I have? Why didn't I? No. It needs to be done in a clean slate, starting over. I was seven months pregnant, um, too early to deliver. So what we did was, um, on, on the biopsy, we did was determine that we had two tumors in the left breast. So it was, the plan was to remove the tumors while the baby was still in utero and um, had had my daughter prematurely, mm -hmm. but she One was month. fine. And then within a week to seven, ten days later, started, started, chemo. started chemotherapy. He had recommended that, um, that my family undergo the BRCA testing um, to find out um, exactly which breast cancer gene I carry and we can track if there's a family history. So um, my parents and siblings initially went through the testing and the test results revealed that my father is a carrier. And it was interesting when he got his results, he called me to say he was sorry and it was very touching. After having the surgery a week later, um, diagnosed with stage three breast cancer lymph node involvement? Well, my mother is a 21-year breast cancer survivor, so um, it is in our family, and um, I opted because I didn't want to have to worry. I'm young. I didn't want to have to m have myself worry about this every day, nor do I want my family to have to go through this. So I opted to um, have a prophylactic mastectomy uh, on the left side. One day, my mother got a phone call from my paternal aunt telling her that she had been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and she had also had breast cancer. And her sister had died of ovarian cancer and my grandmother had breast cancer. So, you know, the bells went off. It was just one too many cancer diagnoses. And even though a lot of thinking at that time was paternal genetics did not factor in. Um, I strongly felt that this was a genetic component. It was the reason, the explanation why I got breast cancer at 37. And I decided that I wanted to have genetic counseling and be genetically tested. It was terrible mm -hmm. for my 15 year old then, he was 13. And we didn't know anyone who had cancer, but you know, cancer is the scary word. So one evening, went up to his room with my husband, and I just said, I'm sick. I had breast cancer, but I am going to fight it. And just tears, just tears. We um, decided to be very aggressive with our, our treatment every two weeks for six sessions. First one, Not so oh, bad. this was easy. You know, it's went not out to so that, bad. Went got out to a little the next day. <laughs> got a little woozy here and there, but it was okay. The second one, not so easy and and thereafter it was just the cumulative effect. My my ten year old I think was the one that I think affected me the most because he was fine until one night. <laughs> one evening. He just couldn't he started screaming on top of his lungs, didn't understand. I didn't realize what was going on. And, you know, he kept saying, Mom, I'm so afraid. Are you going to D? You're going to D? He couldn't even say the word. You find yourself reflecting, going back, and wondering how many more years you have.
I had been faxed over um, a number of places to go to have this lump biopsied and the Ashikari Center was one of them. And my stepmother to this day um, had been a patient of Dr. Roy Ashikari's for oh probably 20 years, 25 years. And she said, that's where you're going, that's the team. I, I remember the first experience with Dr. Ashikari where when we got to his office, we were there for an hour, just about. About 45, 50 minutes, just and he had people waiting for him, too, but he doesn't rush you. Within two hours, I was down at Dobbs Ferry. Community Hospital had no idea where it was. Um, walked into this gentleman's office and just saw the halo over his head and yeah. just embraced us right. and said that everything was going to be okay. I remember one time I came in and there was a nurse holding her hand, just sitting there holding her hand, mm -hmm. which is... You don't get that at the larger institutions. You know, the stay was great. It, you know, it's not an easy surgery, but everybody, the nurses, everyone in the hospital, just, you know, Dr. Ashkari's office, the staff, Dr. Andrew, wonderful, wonderful man. A lot of people initially come saying, you know, this is Dr. Ashkari's hospital. How, how many beds do you have here? You know, this is a small hospital. But I think um, what's happened over time is people have realized, wow, you know, this small hospital is really a gem. It really has all the services that you need for breast cancer care. And, you know, the, just the turnaround time for cancer diagnosis is faster than any institution, I'm sure, in the country. If a woman comes in with a problem, doesn't know what it is, uh, a lump or something seen on ultrasound, um, is that often we can get that evaluated while they come into the, for their meeting, their visit right away, get it even biopsied and even a diagnosis the same day so that they can begin their treatment planning right away. It takes a very tense uh, situation and brings it down to earth, makes, it, makes everyone calmer and really makes their experience so much better. And it's a real special thing that we have here. I like to think that we're sort of like a patient advocate, you know, we're sort of in, you know, it's the patient, us, and, and the doctor, so, you know, we sort of facilitate things. Um, we want them to feel very comfortable because there's a lot of anxieties about uh, diagnosis or possible diagnosis. I loved that there wasn't a large desk with the doctor on one side and my husband and I on the other. He sat down right next to me, he had held my hand and just looked me in the eyes and just said that we're going to take good care of you and that you're going to be okay and it, he, I don't know if I'd be doing this well if I didn't come here. We found ourselves at times defending our, our choice and until people came here. Along the way people have said to me who are good friends and are connected to New York hospitals and New York doctors, you know, are you sure you don't want to see X or see Y, I have a connection here and there. Because sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that the best can be in your own backyard. But here they are. Here they are. Dr. Ashkari and Dr. Salzburg pioneered a procedure. A woman can go and have a prophylactic mastectomy with a product called Allodrome and wake up and be finished. So it's literally done in one step. Yeah, there are many, many women who were looking forward to needing prophylactic mastectomy to make themselves a really cure their possible breast cancer and they were unaware of the fact that they could have one operation because everyone else in the country is doing that standard operation which I did for many years using that expander and trying to stretch out the tissue. Unfortunately that can be very painful, require multiple operations, multiple anesthesias, so women are very excited about having this procedure in one operation. Well one of the one of the uh, desires that I've had since I've joined uh, the group here is to make uh, the center here a comprehensive um, center of excellence that offers not only um, pioneering procedures like Andy's describing but also uh, offering microsurgical options for the patients. So I'm excited because it's really the only center in Westchester right now that's offering this technique. Psychologically for me, um, okay I was going in for surgery, I was having a mastectomy, but I was waking up with um, a breast. 
Well, there's a sense of community at this hospital. There's a sense that uh, the, the nurses, the doctors, and the staff care for the patients in a much different way than at the larger hospitals that we participate in. So the patient has a much better experience. And for a physician, a surgeon as myself, uh, working in the operating room is much more pleasant. Uh, the staff, the anesthesiologists, uh, the whole team approach is much more comforting for me and for my patients. Standard of care for cancer is available in many different ways and it just has to be packaged in a way uh, where patients are the center of that package and not, not considered a secondary aspect of the care. We don't sweat the small stuff mm. anymore. We savor every moment that we're together, every smile, every picture, every holiday. I see everything more delicious now. You know, everything to me is, is, is beautiful. It makes me realize what the important things in life are. You can't go through this experience and it not change you for the better. You know, it's one thing that no one ever tells you when you're diagnosed with, with cancer. Um, the amount of strength that you gain and um, that's exactly what I had gotten from cancer was strength uh, that I thought I never had, but it just, just, it just comes out. nurses the hospital. They're, they're just people who really want to help you, who really care. Brilliant. They are so caring. Warm and genuine. Safe. Dedicated. Hopeful. Wholesome. Kind. Kind. Amazing. <laughs> compassionate. What we do here is a compassionate care. Uh, in a setting of advanced uh, medical care with, uh, with our eye on taking care of patients and their concerns and their families' concerns. We do it because we love to do this. Um, we work well as a group. Um, you know, we really care for the patients that we take care of. And I think that, that really shows when you, when you see or you talk to our patients. From my sad experience. My first wife died with the cancer at age 27 years old. So I decided to my future as a surgeon to be a, a cancer field. That's why I went to Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer after finished my uh, general surgery at Mount Sinai. From my experience, most important to treat the patients or handle the patient is a close relationship between doctors, patient, and their family. Unfortunately, the big institution is so huge and they lose this kind of personal contact. But the small hospital like we are, we can do it very easily. So, I decided to come to the Dallas Ferry Community Hospital. But uh, I think I did the right choice. And we can achieve this goal relatively easily.